Dueling Dialogues is brought to you by our affiliates at IX Web Hosting. Click the banner on the right left chronicles.com to get up to 40% off your first year of the best hosting on the planet. Today's episode of Dueling Dialogue is brought to you by Saucy Eva. Gma's marinade is coming soon to a plate near you to gourmetize your meats and proteins. Coming to you from that once forgotten artery that pulses through the center of the continental United States and into the heart of the Ozarks, Grace Matthews. Looking in from the northern border, our Canadian friend, along with his countrymen, feeling the effects of U.S. political issues, Connor Murphy. Welcome to Dueling Dialogues, episode 42. I'm Connor Murphy here with Grace Matthews. Hi, Grace. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's Thanksgiving Eve, and I'm looking forward to having a little turkey tomorrow. I know you all have already had your Thanksgiving, but us Americans, we make a bigger deal out of it because we're so damn self-absorbed. Well, no, we make a big deal out of it in October. You guys uh, have a different holiday in October. What is it? Um, I don't even know. What Columbus time. Day? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't think much about it. Yeah. In fact, but, we argue a lot about Columbus Day. <laughs> yeah. Our Thanksgiving is early. Otherwise, you know, you're probably this time of year, you're dealing with wintry, snowy conditions. So it's kind of good that we have Thanksgiving a little bit early because it's, you know, the leaves have turned at that point. So it's kind of folly out and not so much wintry. That probably is a good idea. Hadn't really thought about that. So what are we talking about today? Oh, we're talking turkey. We love to eat turkey. I love turkey. <laughs> but we don't want to be a turkey. No. But we've had some turkeys this year. Oh, have you ever? Yeah. In the United States, we've had a lot. And I've heard you've had a few up there. So. Oh, yeah. Let's talk turkey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is going to be good. Now, these are in no specific order because some of these, it's just very hard to tell who's the worst turkey. <laughs> but let's start out with Paul Manafort. Okay. You know, what a jerk. I mean, actually, how can some of these guys that have made so much money, done so many clever things, be so stupid? Yeah, I don't I mean, because basically, that's our turkey list. Right. People yeah. that should know better are paid wages that say, you know better. Paul Manafort was doing all these dirty deals, hiding money, evading taxes. So he gets involved in the Trump campaign and doesn't once think Trump is controversial. I might just, it might just open up my life to the world. Exactly. So what an idiot. And in the same right, Bill O'Reilly, you know, he was the father figure that got on the TV and told us what was right and what was wrong and the no spin zone. Right. And we find out the whole time he's spinning around in circles trying to be more powerful with women. Now, he was unlucky, too, though, because he was the first one. He had to pay all the women off. All the rest of these guys are just coming forward and going, gee, I'm sorry. Right. You know, he actually had to write some checks. Yeah. Yeah. Had to keep that swept under the rug. Yeah. And who could be a d bigger turkey this year than Roger Goodell and the NFL? The saga that continues. I mean, how can you be paid that much money and your solution for next year is going to be that you're, the teams do not come out on the field for the national anthem? Yeah, that's not a solution. That's a non-decision. Yeah. For a guy that wants $49.5 million a year, plus extras, that's the best you can do? Yeah. That's like the mother saying, go ask your father. Exactly, yeah. Nuts. He certainly mm -hmm. is, yes. Yeah. yeah. Who else is nuts? ESPN and Jamil Hill. <laughs> okay. You know, talking Jack on Twitter about the president is, is just bad. And them letting her violate their social media card while... They did not let others. Right. They fired others that were more conservative, yeah. you know, and they're, they're losing viewers for mixing politics and sports. That is so true. But I don't know. How about Hillary Clinton? How about Hillary? What happened? What happened? What happened? I still see her in my mind now running around like the town crier saying, what happened? Yeah. Me you know, too. and. You know, it's, it, and she can't stop. I mean, she is so obsessed with what happened. She couldn't even let Bill have his moment in Little Rock 
for his 25th anniversary of winning the presidency. You know, she just will not let it go. No, she is not going away. And then, of course, there's her good buddy, Harvey Weinstein. A good old Weinstein. Uh, He threw a lot of money behind her campaign as well as others. But what a moron. I guess. I mean, but, you know, he got away with it. There's now like 84 women that have came forward. Wow. You got to think he was pretty clever. A jerk, nasty, gross, disgusting. And and should have been happy with the empire he had. Because he was the man in Hollywood. Why did he need to do this? Yeah. Sick. I don't get it. What about Frederica Wilson? Yeah. Her moment of fame was just so ludicrous. Her and her going after General Kelly. It was just an ugly moment. And Donald Trump in the wake of a soldier's death. I I thought it was poor timing. Right. And then there's, of course, her buddy, Maxine Waters, who runs around and says, impeach, impeach, impeach. She gives speeches all the time about impeaching trump she she said let's let's don't um get rid of these guys that have committed these sexual harassment crimes and and you know we've paid off let's send it through the ethics committee well she once went through the ethics committee herself when she was given tarp money to her husband's bank and it Mm. came back to her she knows that the the ethics committee is a joke so and then there's Jeff Fillick. <laughs> the guy with two feet in his mouth. What? A, yeah, the hot mic. But even before that, okay, so he didn't support Trump. That's fine and dandy, okay? Yeah. But to write a book about it, when you've got an election coming up and you're in a state that supported him, the president, do you write a book bad mouthing him? Yeah. Obviously, he uh, doesn't think a lot before he starts wagging his mouth and when he put that book out he was still planning on running again yeah john mccain oh john mccain another one exactly and that's for taking the golden years of his service to america and making it something vindictive and angry i mean sort of in the way that hillary's angry yeah i find that sad you know, it, it's hard to even laugh at that because it's just sad. General Michael Flynn. Yes. For everything he did. I mean, he drug the his dirty laundry into the Trump presidency as if the Trump presidency needed its own people to drag him through the dirt. Right. <laughs> but I still say mostly for dragging his son into it. Yeah. I mean, what a jerk. Like well, I said, I had to be as a wife. Yeah. (laughs) Barack Obama for not staying quiet. Yeah. And organizing this OFA, which I think is a little toxic. Yeah, definitely. I am in agreement there for sure. Absolutely. And Michelle Obama for talking mean about our men. Yeah, that wasn't very nice of her. No, I mean, really, she doesn't know all men. I mean, it, it sounded like she had an issue with her own husband. She was projecting it on to others. We're giving men the big hair. Actually, lately, I think we've been beating them down to a damn pulp. (laughs) Yeah. Well, some of them deserve it. Some of them deserve it, though. I agree. I agree. And Kevin Spacey's one of them. Oh, hell yeah. I was just going to say his name. Yeah, we need to whoop people around a bit. Yeah, he's going to get Uh, a whooping, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's done. He's done. And uh, how sad because he's talented and really has one of those guys that I, I guess he did a lot at early in his career in the UK, but not so much here. He sort of was a late bloomer in the United States as yeah. far as his career. And that's over. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And Attorney General Jeff Sessions for being such a wimp. <laughs> For recusing himself in the first place on the Russian collusion and then backing off of every single issue. Right. You know, especially Hillary and her emails and her Uranium One situation. I mean, he says they're going to look into the Uranium One and such, but I mean, it took him 10 months to get there. Yeah. And then Elon Musk. Hmm. Tesla. He has misrepresented the technology 
the money they had. And then after he after the investors figure that out and the stock goes down a little bit, he decides to tell him he's bipolar. <laughs> How crazy is that? That's bipolar in itself. Did yeah. he think that was going to help? So then when he came out with the new deal this week where he had the, you know, self-driving trucks and that, everybody said, eh, we don't know. You're bipolar. <laughs> So, I mean, nothing happened. What about the Bush family for saying, as Hillary's running around yelling what happened, that they've actually voted for? <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> How stupid. Say nothing. You, you know, we pretty much figured out you didn't vote for Trump. Yeah. But come out at this stage of the game, when you've got Uranium One and what happened out there running around, you say you voted for? Crazy. Yes, there's, and then there's there's going to be a little more happening with the Bush family, I think. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, they're not going away. No, they're not going away. Okay, then I have to be careful the way I word this one. All the women who claimed they came forward about sexual harassment, but they didn't come forward for themselves. They came forward for the pitiful others, especially those in the Midwest. Thank you very much. We've been coming forward a long time. We're kicking asses, okay? We are not. It's you that have learned from us. Great. Took you a long time, but we're taking care of it. Unfortunately, we have a more of a problem with pedophilia because of it. Because guys in these parts, they don't mess around with women too much. Unfortunately, they mess around with children, and that's bad. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. We have terrible troubles and throughout the Middle West with that. What about Judge Roy Moore? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's what, not going away. He's not going away. And I mean, I really wish he could have, so another Republican could have got in there somehow, some way. It's not going to happen. No. I think he needs to stay in court. I think all these men, I, I don't think you can just say, he touched me. Right. And then the guy doesn't have a job. Yes. I, I think they get, they need more than that. I'm not saying anybody's lying. But I, I also think you have to be careful about a judge because somebody can go walk into the court, get a list of some of their um, cases. And these can be people that have a vendetta for the for the judge. Yeah. So you have to be very careful on that. Actually, that tactic has been used before, not necessarily to take them down running for office, but for other reasons. Wow. So Chris Christie. You know, clearing the beach and having his family at the beach that day. And yeah, that was... Uh, banned everyone else from the beach. I, I think that was just... Public relations nightmare. You know, he made it pretty much through Bridgegate. But that was the nail in his coffin right there. Yeah. You know, and he didn't look that great on the beach. <laughs> no, he looked like a beached whale. He did look like a beached whale. Okay, and what about the jerks? that protest the speakers at Berkeley and other campuses. They have incited violence. I mean, I'm saying protesters. I'm talking rioters. Um, freedom of speech is what makes us different. It's what makes us free. You're exactly right. What about Andy Lack at NBC for hiring Megyn Kelly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's been the biggest thorn in NBC's side in uh, a long time, maybe ever. Right. Yeah, not a good move. And what about the idiot, Charlie Rose, a very respected, probably as of recent years, the most respected man in news. He got more interviews with Barack Obama than anyone did. Right. And uh, now eight women have come forward. He even walked around naked in front of a couple of them. Ew. Ooh. I mean. Once you reach 74 years old, do you really think you should be running around naked? Yeah, nobody in the world wants to see old man. No, no. Ew. And then we have to lump all together the, all the other sexual harassers and the ones that are to come because we know they're coming. They're coming every five minutes yeah. down the stream. We don't have time to mention them all. Yeah, it's getting to be a little much. Every and day there's two, three more. Seems. Oh, exactly. There's two or three more today. Can't keep up anymore. No, no, no. Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. You know, she just she just is a hypocrite. 
I, over and over again, they play the tape of her saying, we have to pass this bill to know what's in it. And yet every time the Republicans come up with a bill, she accuses them of doing it in the dark of night. Right. Behind closed doors. And her relationship with the next one on our list, which is George Soros. Apparently they've had a little weekend. Oh. Yeah, they have asked everyone that came to this little weekend in California to please not talk about the little weekend. (laughs) They're going to regroup the resistance. Now, George Uh. Soros is also the one responsible for the campaigns to boycott advertisers against usually Fox News, when the especially Sean Hannity. When he says something they don't like. Right. He used that tactic, too, I believe, on O'Reilly. Right. So he, he plays dirty. So obviously he makes more money when the Democrats are in power. Yeah, which is interesting because he's a progressive almost to the point. He's very, very rich, of course. But he's almost to the point of a socialist. Yeah. I mean, I don't understand that from a very rich person. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't well, understand. Well, it obviously benefits him financially. He's not really motivated about anything else, I'm sure. that's That seems true. And what about Tom Steyer? That has spent $10 million running a campaign for impeaching Trump. Right. And How's that working I, for him so far? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it really diminished everyone else's complaints. Yeah. It sort of cheapened the idea. So Nancy Pelosi has to now say, I'm not interested in impeaching him. And you know damn good and well she is. But um, Steyer's impeachment campaign, along with others talking about it, has really taken the legs off of it. It's cut the legs right off. Yeah. What about Kathy Griffin? Yeah. She yeah. cooked herself. <laughs> you know, yeah, she, she did. She to cook Trump. And she's tried to take everybody else down with her. You know, she can't work now. She did that decapitated bloody head of Trump in a photo op. And, yeah, you know, what plus, are you thinking? She's, yeah, she's mad because she lost all of her jobs and she can't work. I mean, actually, I wouldn't have hired her before that, but I don't think she's funny. You know who benefits from that? Who? We do. Yeah, yeah. We that's don't a have good, to see her. That's good. Uh, next is Tony and John Podesta. Whoa, there's a couple. Yeah, we're going to hear more about them and their connection to the Russian-inspired Trump dossier and the Russian collusion and more. Um, So, and last but not least, your favorite, Megyn Kelly. (laughs) My favorite. Yes, my favorite turkey. What an opportunist. Yes. Well, I don't know. Yeah, she's (laughs) she's going to be on the turkey list maybe next year, too. (laughs) We've got some yeah. Canadian turkeys, too. Oh, goody. You've got some real turkeys. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And probably two of the biggest ones are Bill Morneau and Trudeau, of course, himself. So while you guys have been playing along with yourselves in the United States, other things in the world have been going on, and there was this big release of what we call the Paradise Papers. Oh, boy. So they were released to the ICIJ, which is the International Consortium of International Journalists. There were 13 million documents that pointed the finger at 120 politicians and leaders, uh, some corporations, Apple, Uber. Uh, Queen Elizabeth was on the list, as well as Bono from YouTube. And they basically gave up the corporate registries of 19 tax havens, and they all had vast fortunes in it. So... Yeah, about 3,000 Canadians are in the document, but this is worldwide, so... So are, but we have 3,000 Canadian turkeys? Yeah, so I, I, I'll i start naming them now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We've got uh, a lot of accusations about the Liberal Party and Justin Trudeau, and Bill Morneau, by the way, is our finance minister, so he makes our tax laws. So <laughs> it, it was, yeah, very interesting that, uh, you know... Some of the journalists out there dug up that he actually, his family owns a villa in France, which he forgot to claim. Oh, yeah. I always forget about my villa in France. Yes, yes. And uh, Trudeau's financial go-to guy uh, was in these Paradise Papers as well. Mm. And he controls the money for the Liberal Party of Canada. So... 
Do you have something called a conflict of interest? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, you know, Morneau got his. He was, yeah, he was dealt with, you know, with a swift fist and a $200 fine. Oh, my goodness. Could he afford that? Well, I think the shares he still has in his company, um, you know, it's supposedly in blind trust, but he moved his company to Barbados, which is one of the tax havens. Exactly. How convenient. Yeah. And when, when they started digging on it, they didn't even have him listed as stepping down from the company in the Barbados. So that was just an error. It was fixed. So no no $200 fine for his $32 million I think, is what his shares are in this company. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I so think he can afford that $200 fine. He probably certainly can, yeah. But that tells you one thing, that over here in Canada, we also got a swamp. Yeah, you do. You do. Well, we can't be all negative today. No. There's a couple of decadent desserts to pass out. Oh, good. The first one should go to the Uranium One informant that will testify on the sale of uranium, the payoffs, and the contributions related to the uranium deal that went to the Clinton Foundation. Ooh, nice. Yes. Yeah. This, we are going to hear a lot more about this. We're going to be talking a lot more about this. But the final dessert... With the great big cherry on top goes to Donna Brazil for making the conversation productive. And I say that because Jeff Sessions totally backed off of the Clinton escapades, let's call them, situations, Mm -hmm. until Donna Brazil's book came out. Wow. And now they're they're back to considering opening up again. She did what was very difficult, even though she's backing off of it a lot now. Because I'm, I'm sure she's frightful about things. Things, yes. I mean, I might just be working again. I don't know. But I heard her interview with Stuart Varney yesterday. And unfortunately, she is she is backing off a bit. She has not got the, the force behind yeah. her story that she had, say, two weeks ago. Right. So, mm-hmm. but bless her. Yeah, she's, she's got big... She sure does. But I hope, you know, we have a lot to be thankful for. I'm thankful for you, Connor. I'm thankful for you, Grace. And um, one thing I want to bring up is, you know, as I was listening to all these sexual harassment cases, I heard a lot of people say, well, he asked me out for drinks or he asked me out to dinner and he was my boss. And, you know, maybe bosses shouldn't ask subordinates out. I don't know. But are you kidding me? Say no. Find a way to say no. If your mother didn't teach you, there are some things you can say. You can giggle and say, oh, we'll do that sometime. Or you can say that your mother just came into town. You have to wash your hair. (laughs) You can quit your job and get another job. Yeah. But don't confuse someone asking you out on a date with sexual harassment. Yeah, Because that convolutes everything, and it also destroys the world of dating, and dating is worth it. Men are worth it. Find the right one. I'm not a relationship expert, but I like wine. (laughs) And sometimes you need to drink a little wine to deal with men. But men are sort of like fine wine. And I'll probably get in trouble for reverse discrimination on this, but... You know, they start off like grapes, then it's our job to stomp on them (laughs) and keep them in the dark until they mature into something that we do want to have dinner with. Oh, you crack me up. Yeah. Well, you know, I can't disagree with any of that. (laughs) Well, and we don't always agree, but life's a journey and we're all in this together. Remember, do not become a victim and hashtag nobody's victim. Thanks for listening. Godspeed, Connor. Godspeed to all of our friends out there. Godspeed, Grace, and happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Dueling Dialogues is brought to you by our affiliates at IX Web Hosting. Click the banner on the right left chronicles.com to get up to 40% off your first year of the best hosting on the planet. Today's episode of Dueling Dialogue is brought to you by Saucy Eva. Gma's marinade is coming soon to a plate near you to gourmetize your meats and proteins.